Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to Cryptbeard17. It's good, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. Tell me in comments. Well, actually, only tell me if it is good. If it's not good, then you know, just stop watching. It's free world. There's plenty of content on YouTube. More than a lifetime's worth uploaded every day, apparently. Whew, that's a lot. Anyway, uh, we've got some digging going on here. Let's get this fighting pit sorted. I think we'll stick with the five Z levels. I believe that's how many we've got, right? There's this first surface. First surface. The top surface. The top surface? There's the surface of the pit. One, uh, one two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, we've got five Z levels. That seems like a reasonable amount. It's not going to kill anyone who's chucked down there. It might break a leg or something, but hopefully it will be all right. Maybe we can put something soft down there. That might be good, mightn't it? A little bit of uh, soft stuff to chuck the prisoners onto. And then when they land, they'll be like, oh, maybe they don't want to kill me. Maybe this is all just a fun little theme park giving me the prisoner experience. And then the cold truth will come to them as their head is caved in by a dwarf. Or whatever we throw against them. Who knows? It might be fun to chuck a troll and an elf in there. And again, maybe they'll get on. Maybe they'll get on so well they'll end up banging each other and we'll end up having to deal with some kind of elf and troll hybrid, which frankly worries me. I don't want to have to deal with that kind of crap. That's disturbing. But they decided not to dig again. It very much looks like it, doesn't it? Although having said that, it's only the six and seven priority left not being dug, so maybe I have got some other... I mean, we've got this bit of digging here. What the hell is that? What, why is there digging there? Go away. There we go. That's neater. Much neater. Uh, Filthy elves wouldn't be surprised. Well, there you go. I mean, they love nature. Maybe they love nature just a bit too much. Oh, um, I've had a bit of a problem. You see these trees? Well, you notice how they're incredibly sexy? Well, I, I um, I tried putting my willy in one, and, um, unfortunately, I've got a pretty bad splinter. And I, I think I might bleed out. Although, if I think unsexy thoughts, like thoughts about rocks, maybe it'll stem the bleeding and I won't, you know, but I can't stop thinking about trees. Every time I see that splinter, I'm like, ooh, trees, and then I pass out for loss of blood. There we go. That's what, uh, in the trade, we like to call a very badly conceived skit. Maybe you enjoyed it. In which case, uh, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the ideal way to build an audience, isn't it? You just just denigrate anybody who actually enjoyed it. Uh, uh, go away! Don't watch me. He says. <laughs> oh, hello, Buckshot Brigade. Welcome back. What the fuck did you just walk into? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, performance art. If Alex Jones can be performance art, then I fucking well can. Right. Gisep or Gisep throat squirts. Okay. Wishes to reside in Steel Fortress for the purpose of entertaining citizens and visitors. Well, I don't think we actually want to encourage that kind of entertainment industry to flourish here. I mean, I don't know. It's hypocrisy, but I'm sorry. Just... No. Bye. Good Lord. Good Lord. Sounds like an elven name if ever I heard it. Anyway, um, let's let them keep digging. There's only a little bit more left designated. And then we have to think about how we're removing the ramps. Actually, no, let's not think about that. Let's think about... What? Huh? Well, it's deeper than I thought it was. Um, we could just attach it to the cavern layer. That's... That's an easy way in and out, although it's a massive trek for the gladiators when they actually want to go in there. In fact, what we could do is just make a little room. Oh, no, we can't make a little room there. The, the pit will eventually... Wait a sec. Oh. Figgins. Let me put a marker in. So that's the edge of the pit. Designate. There, that's the edge of the pit. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, look at that margin. 
we're close. We're very close. We're going to have to have a little bit of um, a little bit of a protrusion on the pit. Or oh, there's going to be some wall building. But uh, damn, I thought I'd planned that out perfectly. I thought I'd really been very careful there, but apparently not. Can you put a wood furnace near where the elves are imprisoned? Oh, fuzzy. I like the way you think. That's a lovely idea. Let's burn their precious wood in front of them. Let's watch as the tears roll down their cheeks, and we shall collect them in goblets and sup on them. Mm, elven tears. Mm, like the purest spring water. Sorry, uh, where was I? Uh, yes, th thinking about how to get fighters in and out of the pit. Well, by necessity, there's going to be issues. How deep is this pit? How deep is this pit? How deep? How deep? I really want to know. Uh, sorry. Uh, build. So I think if we put a wall across here. Oh. Yeah, we can actually... That that does seem like a good way to wall off. Oh, no, it won't wall off the outside, will it? Because they can just fly up around this bit if they can fly. Here's me getting all excited, thinking I've figured out a way to wall off the uh, outside world and stop forgotten beasts getting in, and I'm just being an idiot. I'm just being a dunderheaded nincompoop. An absolute bloody idiot. Okay, here's my plan. Okay, th this we know to be the extents of the pit on the surface, so we know what we're dealing with there. What I'm thinking is we come across here, so bang. Oh, wait a minute, that's not what we want to do. Dig, there we go. Put door there, door there. Build ourselves a little corridor, bosh. And then we make some stairs. Ding, ding, ding. Let's go up, check, check, we're not clashing. We're not clashing, down, 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 down. There we go, that'll bring us up some nice stairs there. Now we know they are butting... Oh, they're not. They're not butting anything. We can build this room nicely. So we've built up a little space down here. Let's do that. There we go. Get that away. That's nice. I like the shape of that. Uh, and then maybe we'll uh, have a little tunnel that goes off... Wait a minute. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well done, scoundrel. Right, let's remove the designation here, because we need to cut another floor down, because of course we do. There we go. Down the floor, down the floor. In fact, we need to go several bloody floors down. There we go. This is better. This is better. Now we can dig out here. Good lord. So sloppy. So unbelievably sloppy. Unprofessional. Ah, shit. We've lost the stairway. Uh, I... And you're back again. Good. Good. Um, so, what are we doing here? I just think we'll make this area up. The stairs come down in the middle. And we'll just make a nice big room down here where the gladiators can prep. Maybe we'll even have a special squad in a barracks down here. That might be a good idea, mightn't it? Mightn't it? And then, what do I do if I do that? Oh. There we go, that's a whole shift room. In fact, let's, rather than doing that, do this. And then get rid of this little bit here. Bear with me, bear with me. There is some level of thinking behind this. In fact, we'll go one further. We will designate two more rows down here. There we go, two of them. And we will remove two of these. Fish bash bosh. Put doors on it. Just put a nice little rim around the stairway. And that's it. That'll be nice. And then we can dig through to here. Bing bang bong. In fact, let's dig several. Let's put a load of floodgates. Uh, no, actually, I've just realised that way madness lies. What we're going to do. So we're going to build two out down here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see where I'm going with this? And we're going to delete these. There we go. And we're going to put nice long entryways here. And then we can have a double floodgate system. Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe 
if this one opens, this one closes, and if this one closes, this one opens. So there's this little square here. We'll get our gladiators to stand in that square, and then we'll flip the switch. Boom! In they go. Rawr! Battering fools left, right, and center. And then, once that's done with, we uh, let them back out again. Sound good? I mean, I'm guessing there are flaws. But we'll try it. We'll try it. I think it'll work. I hope it will work. I plan on it working. Let's unpause the action and let these guys dig. Okay, we still don't have enough barrels. In fact, let's look at the manager. We haven't looked at the manager yet tonight. We'll see what we've got. We've got the coffin order going. Oh, we've built... Oh, actually, not as many as I thought. I thought it was 84 built, but no. It's 84 out of 100 left. 21 rock mugs. They've done some real good work there. We've got plenty of mugs knocking around. Nine rock bookcases remain. We don't actually need book, book cases, <clears throat> bookcases anymore. Rock pots should be able to contain booze, so they must be producing them relatively slowly because they're complaining about not having any. Spiked green glass balls. At least we've got a few of those made. They're going to be worth a bit of money once we start selling them. Clearly, the superior mug is made of skulls, says Buckshot Brigade. Well, yes, in an ideal fantasy scenario, you do want to be drinking from the skulls of your defeated enemies. But uh, sometimes it's just not on the cards. Just not on the cards. Maybe they'll make one through a mood. That's possible. But I don't think you can actually make one just by deciding you want to make a skull cla class. A skull glass. Or can you? I don't know. Is there a method by which one could uh, induce dwarves to make skull cups? Seems possible. Um, I've actually made some shirts, dresses, cloaks, trousers, all that jazz. That's pretty good. Although the rest of the stuff hasn't been done yet. We've got no leather shoes made. Um, oh, there's two, two orders for spiked glass balls. Or are there? Am I? Oh, look, yeah, there's one. Okay, we'll remove the other one because, frankly, it's unnecessary to have two orders for the same thing. Oh, infinite spiked green glass balls. Well, that is silly. Let's not do that. Um, remove R. There we go. Lovely. So, melting metal objects. How many, excuse me, metal bars do we have now? He says through the hiccups. Uh, e, B, A, R, S. So, we've got aluminium, bismuth bronze, black bronze, bronze, iron, iron, what's J? In a job. Okay, that makes sense. Nickel, silver, silver, steel, steel, tin, zinc, zinc. Right. I think it makes sense to... Yeah, let's turn some of this stuff into leggings and start uh, making and melting. Seems like a good idea. So J, M, uh, Q, S, T, E, E, L, N, Steel leggings. There we go. And how many do I want? Let's put in a perpetual order and we'll just keep melting them down until we get some absolutely fantastic steel mail. Just keep recycling the stuff. Who? Who's petitioning me? Saxel Arrow Scars. Why do you, why so many entertainers choosing to come here? We've got one tavern keeper and nobody else working there has anything to do with the fortress other than they turned up one day and went, Excuse me. Am I allowed to play my musical instrument here, or is this a no busker zone? And then we foolishly allowed them to. What a load of idiocy. Let's put some doors on here. There we go. Oh, we've got plenty of doors. Let's go wild with the doors. Why not? There we go. Got to do it with the keyboard suddenly, because otherwise it won't work, apparently. The mouse only works some of the time. Some of the time, it works all the time. We didn't activate that second squad, did we? Okay, let's go back to the military screen. I've just remembered that. Uh, down to the banded lanterns. They've only got five of them in there. So what we do is so schedule. Um, and we look at the laborious castles. They're supposed to train all the time. I thought we took two training days out. Huh. Okay. Anyway. So uh, we'll look at this one, we'll edit it, uh, we'll set it to three soldiers minimum, that works doesn't it? If you've got five, let two of them not be there. And then we copy 
and paste, 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 paste. There we go. So now the banded lanterns should begin training. Correct? Let's go back. I'm sure there's something else I need to do. Alerts, that's it. And so we go to the banded lanterns. No, go down to active training. Go to the banded lanterns and say, huh, oh, I forget how to activate them. What do we need to do? Uh, is it in the military screen or is it in the squad screen? Banded lantern C T schedule inactive. Hey, there we go. That's the way to do it. Active slash training. S view schedule. Hey, look at that. Wow, I'm actually learning the Dwarf Fortress interface. Amazing, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've got ten beds. Let's see if there's any more armor racks ready to go in there. B armor stand needs armor stand. Weapon racks needs weapon rack. Fair enough. Difficult to make a barracks without weapon racks and armor stands, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it works out. We definitely need more furniture stockpiles. That's the big thing we don't have. Okay, so this is our new fortress. And these stairs where it goes to the fighting pit seem to be our only real up and down into this fortress that doesn't connect up to the main surface fort. More petitions. You better be here to fight monsters. No, Raz Mind Evils. Raz Mind Mind veils. Okay, sorry, I think it was mind evils. E nonetheless, evil or veil, you're not coming in. Get out. Okay, so I'm thinking if we dig out round here and start making some storage rooms, just do a whole floor of storage rooms and get shitloads of furniture storage so we finally don't have to sit there waiting for them to uh, find a little space somewhere, a little nook or cranny to fit everything in. Because look at these furniture storerooms. They are full. Although we've got a lot of um, a lot of bins, they could be used elsewhere. A lot of slabs as well. Man, we need to find somewhere else to put those. <sighs> what to do with them though? How to deal with the situation? Because all of our workshops are now probably absolutely stuffed full of things. Um. So it's a shame they can't do the same thing for our little stockpile of smeltable things. But never mind. Never mind. Yeah, down to the old fortress. Let's see what we can do here. Now, do I keep everything on this floor and build an industrial zone down here? Or do I go down a floor and do it on a, a lower level? Could go up, I suppose. Nah. Down is best. Down is definitely best. We'll start here. I'm going to put this on low priority so that it doesn't get done until we've actually uh, until we've actually dug out the fighting pit. Because annoyingly, it takes time to dig. How far down can we go? Okay, right. We start this floor with mainly just warehousing space. Okay, that's the plan. So we're going to go right up to the wall. How far away from the edge am I? Jesus Christ. There we go, that's good enough. Go right up to the wall, we're going to go down, 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 down. Two by three shift size room. Massive. Absolutely huge mungus. Can I do it on the other side as well? One, two. No, I cannot. Although... We can do a slightly smaller room. And of course we can do it on the other side as well. These rooms are going to be freaking massive, aren't they? It's nice. I like it. Shit. Is that good? That is good. That's nice. Lovely. And then we'll do one more room on this side, which is going to be the same as the one next to it. There we go. One, two, three, one, two, bang. And these are going to be just for storing probably furniture for now. We'll start off filling one up. You know what? Maybe I should make one slightly higher priority. Also, let's put some doors in there just for the sake of it. Okay, <clears throat> so that's going to be all right. Let's check the digging space again. 
How do we... Let's wait till this little area down here has been dug out. Oh, it's nearly done. Okay, once that's done, we can really start channeling out all the slopes. Very exciting. Resume. I've paused it for some reason. Purely accidental, you understand? Okay. Oh, we've got a, ma a masterfully improved bookcase. And the mayor has slipped into depression. Shit. He was one of the suspects for being a vampire, wasn't he? Maybe he's just depressed that he can't get blood? It's possible, right? Theoretically, that would upset a vampire. I don't know, though. He spends most of his day just fishing. He's in a way, so upset. Seems like quite a relaxing lifestyle, to be honest. A very relaxing lifestyle. How many idlers we got? Seven or eight? Is that countable in the, uh... What the hell? Miasma in the butchers. Well, that's okay. It's behind a miasma baffle, so we don't need to worry. Anyway, where were we? Let's look up here. Are people partying in this place yet? Has this actually been designated as a dining room? Or have I just been sitting here whacking tables into a room for no good goddamn reason? Well. That's a surprise. Right, let's make this a dining room. Big as you could, please. Wow. The dining room is so big, it goes beyond the maximum size for a dining room. That's impressive. Enter. Done. Meeting hall. Yes. Uh, do we give it an owner for that chair? No. Assigned location? What do we assign it to? Nothing, because they're all either the tavern or the library or the temples. And we don't want either of those, so goodbye. That's it. There's our dining hall. Fantastic. For ages they haven't had a dining hall because I de-designated the one down here. Shit. No wonder they're upset. No wonder they're starting to cry. Let's remove that building. We don't need that. Remove the chair and that chair. And finally we've cleared out the old dining hall. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it wonderful? Hello again, Clay Cree. Welcome back. Check the mayor's thoughts. Maybe they don't like having meetings with angry or sad dwarves. Uh, didn't see when you where you started the dining room. Was it in the very middle? No, it wasn't. It was uh, at the far end. So that kind of makes sense why it wouldn't reach the end. But you know what? I'm too lazy to fix it now. So we're just going to have to settle for what we've got. Uh, okay. Uh, what are they doing? Checking the mayor's thoughts. Okay, let's give it a crack. Let's try doing it through here. Uh, there's the mayor. No, that's a miner. Minor, minor, militia camera, minor, woodworker, carpenter, engraver, mason, ranger. Look, there's the mayor. Okay. Uh, view unit. Oh, he needs a decent office. His office is meagre. He's got no quarters and no dining room. What? And he wants us to make helms? I can make a helm. Um, okay, let's go to his thoughts and preferences. Haggard and drawn due to the tremendous stresses placed on him, and is in depression. Within the last season he was eager, remembering being elected. He was uneasy after being unable to pray to, pray to Gadan for too long. He was uneasy, uneasy after being unable to pray to Locum for too long. He's a religious lad, isn't he? Okay. Horrified after seeing Edom Martifence die. Oh. He saw someone die. Felt empathy while being cried on by an unhappy citizen. Horrified, reliving, seeing Mucus Citrus die. Okay, he's just having a bad time of it, really. Let's give him a nice bedroom to try and cheer him up. Um, I mean, is it worth it giving him one down here? Might as well. Who's in this bed? Solon June bolted the tanner. This is a special bedroom for a special person, not for you. Okay, assign bed. There we go, and we'll assign it to the mayor, and then we'll auto allocate to the mayor, and that should sort us out a bit of the mayor's mood, right? Seems sensible. Uh, empathy is good. They like the meetings, and that's good. Excellent. Excellent having an empathic... Um, what was he again? Mayor, that was it. For some reason, I was, as soon as I said empathic, I just started thinking about Deanna Troy, and I wanted to say um, officer. But then again, ironically, Deanna Troy wasn't even an officer. She wasn't a member of Starfleet. She was just someone that they took with them. 
like a like a a non recruited therapist. Uh, let's check out our graveyard. We've probably got enough graves to put in there, right? B N. Uh oh. The Etten Sober Sletsmald Ngonu Stronsu has come. A giant humanoid monster with two heads. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let us test our new military might, and hopefully they'll actually do some killing. Although I am concerned that they may still not have weapons. I certainly haven't taken measures to make sure they've got weapons, so it's very unlikely they do. Are we going to um, do the burrow alert? You know what? I'm feeling frisky. We're just going to send the lads out, well, lads and lasses out, and do some killing. We're going to go crazy. Uh, where's the Etin gone? Etin, Etin, Etin. There you go. There's the Etin. That's K. There we go. And done. Let's watch the action unfold. They've become wrestlers. That's good. The Etin appears to be meandering around, not really paying much attention to our dwarves, just making its way through the woods. Do, do, do. Etin's got two heads. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Where are my dwarves? Here they come, piling out the fortress. They're ready for action. Oh, it looks like a charge. A clash. Oh, one of our boys is backing off, but no, I think we've got the upper hand. Let's take a look at the combat reports, just to be sure. Just to make sure. Uh, here's the Etin. He's got five pages of reports. Uh, the Etin misses the wrestler. The wrestler punches the Etin in the right upper arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Punching charging, colliding, I think that's where we saw him move away a bit. Uh, attacks the Etin but jumps away. Etin attacks the wrestler but misses. Here we go. The wrestler punches the Etin in the left foot with her right hand, bruising the muscle. The force twists the left ankle. The wrestler punches the Etin in the upper body with her right hand, bruising the muscle. Cool, lovely. I'm seeing a lot of blue. That's good. Oh, purple, but that's the our wrestler latching on, so that's good. The wrestler bites the Etin in the right foot, tearing the fat and bruising the muscle. The wrestler latches on firmly. The wrestler punches the Etin in the right upper leg with her left hand, bruising the muscle. The Etin breaks the grip of the wrestler's upper front teeth on the Etin's right foot. The wrestler scratches the Etin in the fourth toe right foot, tearing the muscle. The force pulls the right foot. The Etin misses the wrestler. Okay, it's all much of a muchness. The bard's back again. The bard's back again. Do you remember the bard charging in last time and trying to rip the um, enemy's clothes off? That was a horrific way to die. Just being stripped and beaten. Um, they were in Starfleet, I'm pretty sure, because there was an episode where they took a test where the only answer was to sacrifice a crew member. No, Deanna Troy isn't an officer. She's not even an enlisted person. She's a civilian on the ship. Like a civilian doctor. Or therapist, whatever she was. Or I could be wrong. I mean, it's been a while since I watched Star Trek The Next Generation, but I'm reasonably confident that she wasn't actually an officer. Or at least it wasn't actually a member of Starfleet. She was like a member of the Federation. Somebody look that up. Hit the wiki. And there must be... We've got eight people from the internet in this room, so the odds are at least one of us has a vested interest in Star Trek lore. So whoever you are, raise your hand and correct me. Or, you know, if I'm right, tell tell everybody I'm right. Either way is good. Okay, so we're biting the Etin a lot. We're only three pages in. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't appear to have got a single hit in yet. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The Etin charges at the bard. The Etin collides with the Bard. The Bard is knocked over and tumbles backwards. The Etin kicks the Bard in the lower right back teeth with his left foot, and the severed part sails off in an arc. That's not good. We've knocked his back teeth out. Okay, bad. Uh, the wrestler punches the Etin in the left hand, force bends the left wrist. The Etin strikes the Bard in the upper body with his Vitcheska. Vitseska? Bruising the muscle and bruising the left lung through the mule leather cloak. The bard is having trouble breathing. The wrestler punches the Etin, lower body, misses the wrestler, blah, blah, blah. Wrestler knocked over, Etin misses. The Etin strikes the wrestler in the right upper leg with his sakatudil thasdotokang, bruising the muscle through the giant cave spider silk cloak. Oh dear, bruised. Scratching the Etin. On page five now, force twists the left knee. Wrestler punches the Etin in the mouth. Right head with his right hand bruising the left cheek. Right head skin. 
At least we're getting some headshots in now. That's the main thing. The wrestler is knocked over and tumbles backwards. Okay, so we can go back into the action and watch it unfold. Come on. Knock that etin down. Smash the etin. Smash the etin. Smash the etin. Smash the etin. Smash that etin's heads in. That was terrible. Oh, hang on! Looks like the Etin's stuck. He's in a, he's in a, he's in a bind. Our lads are actually on his square, so someone actually climbed onto him there. Let's go back to the combat reports and see how it works on. <gasps> Twenty-six pages. Oh my god! <gasps> the bard punches the Etin in the upper body with his right hand, bruising the fat. Where is it? Hang on. The wrestler bites the Etin in the nose, right head, tearing the cartilage. The wrestler latches on firmly. One, two, three. Bard bastes. Uh combat reports, and then the Etin breaks the grip of the wrestler's upper front teeth on the Etin's nose, right head. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing... Why is there a herbalist fighting? We should have nothing but wrestlers in. Oh, hello, hello, one of the... Uh... <gasps> the Etin scratches the wrestler in the right lower arm, tearing apart the muscle through the cave spider silk cloak. An artery has been opened by the attack, and a motor nerve has been severed. That's not good. That's not good at all. So... We are, we do seem to have. Uh oh. Someone got. Wait a second. What's going on here? The Etin grabs the wrestler by the right ear with his left upper leg. The Etin takes the wrestler down by the right ear with the Etin's left upper leg. How do you grab someone's ear with your upper leg? Sober Sletsmug Nagonu Stotostu Etin. Those injuries begone fear. The Etin releases the grip of the Etin's left upper leg on the wrestler's right ear. Makes no sense. But still. So let's go up a few more pages. Uh, the Etin gets enraged, grabs the wrestler by the thumb. Uh, Etin throws the wrestler by the thumb. Okay, we need to get some weapons in. I realise now that sending wrestlers to fight an Etin is a bad idea. Although, hang on. my God, look, one of our dwarves grabbed it by the throat with his teeth. This is a pretty brutal fight. Our lads are doing well. The Etin vomits. The Etin is having trouble breathing. Looks sick. Looks even more sick. I think the Etin's going to die, but we may lose somebody a Full safety is not guaranteed, but look at this. It's still, it's down on the ground. It's on its way out. So another quick look. Boom. How are we looking for combat reports now? 36 pages. And we're seeing a lot more blue and a lot less red. Yeah, the Etin's going down. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time until it dies. We do need to probably sort our guy who's uh, been wounded out. He had a severed artery, so it's highly likely they'll bleed out. But, you know, once the thing's dead, we can see what we can get done. Man, they're taking their time, aren't they? I think this is what's happened here is it, they, once it's down, it just takes a long time to beat something to death barehanded. That's why they're taking so long. We've now got multiple dwarves standing in the same square, so presumably it's on the ground and they're just sort of stamping on its prone body. It's dragging itself away by the look of things. Oh dear. Let's look at the combat reports and see how it's working out for the Etin. 79 pages. And how many of those are good? Uh, oh, The herbalist bites the Etin in the left head, tearing the fat. The herbalist latches on firmly. The Etin breaks the grip of the herbalist's upper front teeth on the Etin's left head. Oh my goodness. Those, they're very bitey. Hopefully they'll chew it to bits. Come on, then. keep going. Keep going with your crazy beatdown. Oh, here we go. There's been some more activity in chat. Deanna Troy was a half betazoid, half human Starfleet officer. Well, I stand corrected, Clay Crew. I, I stand corrected. For some reason, I thought she was just a civilian. Not, I say just. I thought she was a civilian adjunct to the ship. But uh, turns out I'm wrong. Kill him, says Gingy Ginger. Well, yes, that's the intention. That's where we're heading with this little uh, debacle. Fuzzy Logic says everybody covered in vomit now, still going in teeth first. <laughs> That's the thing. You don't see that in the combat reports. What you don't realise is because they're coming up and they've been uh, oh, we've got another dead vampire. 
another dead vampire, another vampiric victim. We'll check that in a minute. That's not you, Clay Cree, by the way. You're still locked up. Somebody else is guzzling down the blood of the innocent. Well, presumably the innocent. They were a child. Although I suppose children can be not innocent uh, if they do stuff wrong knowingly. Let's, let's not start. Let's not start going down the path of discussing the philosophy of uh, whether or not children can be criminals. That seems like a bad place to be going. Let's just let this beatdown continue, and then we'll hunt for the dwarf. We'll hunt for the dwarf responsible. If it's even a dwarf, that's the thing. In fact, I'm going to pause quickly. In fact, I'm not. I'm just going to let this fight carry on. Should I send the rest of the militaries in? You know, I'm going to send the other squads in. That seems like a good idea. Uh, not the Night Rippers, obviously, because they're actually one person who is a vampire locked in a room. Doesn't make sense. So we're going to say K, attack, bring my cursor down. There we go. And then we have to find the square that actually has. There we go. Sobos Sletsmug Ngonu Strunsu. Uh, Strasnu, sorry. Uh, and we'll kill that. Brilliant. And then when you come up to the surface. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, we were talking about the fact that they've been biting on and vomiting. So as soon as they come up and feel the. Uh, you know, the sun's rays on them, where they're cave adapted, they start being sick everywhere. And uh, the old, uh, who's firing a crossbow into the melee, you idiot? Stop that! Who is this? Lusco what now? Lusco Pathrillas then. Human. Of course it's a human. No respect for dwarven lives. Are they still beating this bastard? Is he dead yet? It's not dead yet. How many pages? Oh, do you see that little bit of vomit fly? They're biting down on the etin and then vomiting through their teeth on it. It's terrible. Still 78 pages, but is that because... It is because. It's got, that's the maximum number of pages by the looks of things. It's just uh, pushing the old pages off the top. Only a single etin swing on each of these pages. Oh, two on this one. But they're all misses. This page doesn't even have a single one. It's just pulling bitey dwarves off of it. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is starting to look a bit brutal, isn't it? <laughs> this is Dwarf Fortress! Maybe because they didn't wear a Starfleet uniform for most of the show. That's true, Clay Cree. That would explain it. She had that weird jumpsuit on. They all had pretty weird jumpsuits on, didn't they? Oh, look, the Etting's dead. Let's check for the killing blow. How did it work out in the end? Uh, Etting. Uh... The wrestler punches the Etin in the upper body with his left hand, bruising the muscle and bruising the right lung. Delightful. Doesn't tell me who did it, but I'm sure we'll find that out in the old uh, therapist. Right, unpause it. Everybody can go off duty again. Uh, oh, you already have. Oh, that's good. Off your trot. Back to your day to day. It might have suffocated. That's a good point. If they pummeled its throat hard enough, it wouldn't have been able to breathe, and then it would have just suffocated. Which, at which point, we probably should have just stopped beating it and got back to work training. Then again, I think the experience of beating down on an Etin provides more experience than actually training and sparring with other dwarves. It seems like it would, right? A real combat situation versus a not real combat simulation? We've got a couple of people, sorry, zooming in and out like that. We've got a couple of people hanging around here a bit long. Buckshot Brigade and who else? Vukar the Bard. Why aren't you moving, lads? You injured? Let's take pause. Let's go over to Dwarf Therapist and check how things have planned out. Hello. We've got 151 before the attack. 151.44.0. Oh my god, I hope all the babies grew up. Because otherwise we've got a thirsty vampire running around killing all the babies. And 43. That will be the trial we just found out got drained. We've still got 151, so nobody died. That's fantastic. Let's take a little look at sorting by squad. A sec, there we go. Sort by squad. And then we'll look at the military screen. Has anybody leveled up? How's the wrestling skill? Ooh, okay. Um... No squad? Oh, there we go, the Banded Lanterns. The Banded Lanterns ain't all that when it comes to wrestling. However, these guys are starting to get pretty good. We've got pro wrestlers. This is good. This is good. Hopefully, they won't succumb to steroid abuse. Abuse? <coughs> abuse? But we'll see. This guy's killed a couple of... Uh... Oh, this guy's killed not only the elf, but also... It's forgot. It's fuzzy. It's you. You killed the forgotten beast. That's nice, isn't it? 
In Adventure Node, Evolode, sorry. In Adventure Node, says Clay Cree, it's real fun to become a vampire, strangle something until it passes out but doesn't suffocate, then drink its blood. Seems like a good strategy, really, if you, if you have to drink the old blood. This guy's killed five chinchillas. This guy killed three goblins. It does look like nobody actually killed the Yeti, and it just died of secondary injuries, which is a shame, but you know what? It's dead. That's what's important, right? That's what's important. And Fuzzy, you've already got a, uh, a forgotten beast kill under your belt, so you don't need to worry about killing old Ettins. Ettins are boring old vanilla beasties. Barely worth the effort. All right, let's look at the health situation, see who got hurt. Oh, yeah, there's been some injuries put in here. Let's have a look at diagnosis and recovery. Okay, they're recovering and they're being diagnosed. There's a few other people who need some help. Got a dressing on... Um, oh, these are all treatments. Okay. Oh, this is Odom. This is the guy who got dehydrated, isn't it, and got stuck in the hospital? Anyway, no one has an impaired ability to fly, which seems odd to me because dwarves don't naturally fly. They usually require some mechanical assistance. Might have reached the limit on number of dwarves, and if children and babies all just grew up, which only takes one year. Oh, okay, then. That's fine. In that case, that's good. That's good, because we're going to stop having people arriving and uh, people having babies. And we can get on with the business of getting the fortress to tick over. So, who's got arterial damage? Nobody. I thought somebody had a severed artery. Oh, oh, here we go. No squad. Uh, left foot, torn artery. How did Korad get that? They're not even in the military. Must have just charged in when they saw the thing. Bit too patriotic, if you ask me. So, anyone bleeding? Nobody's bleeding. Anyone got blood loss? Yes. What's this? Pale and faint from blood loss. Okay, but not dead. Good. All right, breaks and fractures. Okay, we've got two people with breaks, one of whom's being treated. What have you got? You've got a broken hip, wrist and elbow. Ow. And this one's got broken ribs. That's fine. No one's got a fever. No one's been gutted. It's not really a medical condition, is it? It's more like a cause of death, I'd say. I mean, once you've hooked your guts out, and it's not really a matter of, can we save him? It's more of a, how long will he last? Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, and I also have never pulled mine or anyone else's guts out, so uh, what do I know about the whole thing? This one's lacerated. Uh, ooh, it's the same guy with the broken hip, but the tissue's been smashed apart. I'm not sure Vukar is going to make it through this, but we'll see. Stranger things have happened. They've all got impaired mo movement, which is mainly dizziness. What's this one? Unconsciousness. It's fewer nauseous. Anyone got nerve damage? This would be the guy who got his artery slashed, wouldn't it? Apparently not. But this this is the guy who got his artery slashed. What do you do, Korod? Oh, it's a human. It's Korod Plunge Sweetness. I remember him coming to the fortress because of his double entendre rich name. Uh, so where are we going? Numbness? No. Pain? No. Paralysis? I like that. We've got people who are uh, with smashed pelvises or smashed hips and, and all of the meat around those hips are mashed to bits. But do they feel any pain? No. Uh, paralysis? No. Tendon damage? What's wrong with your tendons? Which one? Excuse me. The middle spine. I was unaware of tendons on the middle of spine, but it makes sense. No one's got impaired vision. We've got some no other damage. Oh no, we've got some miscellaneous bruises on the spine and has anyone got any severed pieces? Vukar's got lower back teeth and this one's got ouch left lower leg. Ooh gingy ginger ouch <laughs> joined the military today lost a leg how we well hopefully you'll get used to walking on a crutch and you'll be just as good just as good as you were before. I should stop slumping in this chair because it puts my head in the lower third of the camera, which just looks wrong. There we go. Um, so there we go. There's the battle report. Let's go back to the fortress and see what's going on. Oh god, I did pause it, didn't I? Oh, thank god for that. <laughs> I did pause it. Well done me. Congratulations. Uh, I think the noob launcher has the limit of 200 dwarves, which you're a little below. Yeah, there might be another migration wave or a few more babbies born, but... Uh, not doing too bad. Ah, good. Someone's carrying the wounded away. 
And that's what I like to see. We see them in the hospital getting treated, stitched back up. Let's see, is the hospital active? It's fairly active. Fairly active. Oh my god, a pool of Bosa Horror Swelter's blood and a pool of Odom Cyclone Spear's blood. Good lord. How dreadful. Okay. So, ah yes, the justice screen. Where does that come from? Zed, is it? Yes, justice. Justice. So, <gasps> Greg too has died. Poor old Greg. Onto his third dwarf when he comes back. Dear, oh dear. So, uh... Oh no, no sentence pending, violation of production order. Huh, okay. Here's a murder. Accuses Kib the mayor, accuses Kib the mayor, accuses Kib the mayor. That seems fairly damning. Mm. Okay. Can we look at the details of their uh, thing? Let's view the cold cases. Nobody cares. Okay. I'm wondering. Next Greg must have 3Gs at the end. Yes, 3 Greg. 3G Greg. And then 4G Greg. And then the more faster and modern 5G Greg. Um, so I don't want to put the mayor in prison. It does seem it's going to be awkward keeping the mayor in position if he's going to be a vampire. Very difficult times. What do we do? I mean, we could send him off to join the uh, the vampire squad. Hmm. Let me just pause. I'm going to go over to the therapist again. I'm going to take a little peek at our lovely mayor and see what he's up to. So, Kib, here he is. Currently very unhappy. Very unhappy. Uh... Bitterness after getting into an argument. Horrified after witnessing death twice. Profession gem cutter. I mean, do we really need him cutting gems? He is the only person really capable of doing it in the fortress. However, I think we're going to have to condemn him to, uh, to a life in the vampire squad, really. I mean, the evidence is almost overwhelming. What do we reckon? I love the text the game gives you when you try to expel the mayor. Well, I would try to expel him, but vampires are valuable. They're useful. They are, after all, immortal. Very good. Does he, get a, does he kill a child and get an unhappy thought for seeing a child die? That's an interesting proposition. Let me have a look. Uh, Within the last season, he felt exhilaration after punishing somebody with a beating, disgust after retching on miasma, and horrified after witnessing a death. Uh, pleasure seeing a fine bed. Tenderness after bringing somebody to rest in a bed. Oh. Loneliness after being away from friends. Restless. Worry. Worry. Uh, loneliness. Restless. Worry. He likes helping people. He really loves helping people. Man, it must be pretty tough being a vampire who likes helping people. If you try to expel a mayor, it says, cannot expel, does the expelling. Makes sense. Kind of makes sense that that person would be difficult to kick out of the fortress. Ah, oh, so what do we do with our potentially vampiric mayor? 116 year old, 113 and 10 cubic centimetre dwarf. Hmm. Hello, Sanctum Spirit Stone. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. We're just pondering over whether we should expel the mayor for being a vampire, because although we have no concrete evidence, the circumstantial evidence is quite significant. A lot of witnesses say Kib done it. So, hmm. Difficult to say. Difficult to say. Hmm. I just realised the pop-up doesn't come up, and uh, my face is even concealing any of the information that does come up. So it's, uh, lock him up in a room. If he lives, then he's a vamp. Well, that's what I'm thinking, but I don't want him to go crazy as well, because he's a very social dwarf. You know what? Why am I even wondering about this? Of course he's got to be locked up. M. We go to the uh, the Night Rippers. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Night Rippers, slot two. Where's our 
Right, where's our mayor? Mayor, mayor, mayor. Minor worker, mason, manager, captain, wrestler, administrator. What the hell is an elt? Oh, an elite wrestler. Okay, I get you. Not an elt rose. Ranger, bone cut, mason. No, no, no. I thought that was a mayor for some reason. Woodcraft, butcher, bone doctor, fisher dwarf, glass maker, chief medical dwarf, carpenter, miner. Engraver, planter, tanner, farmer, brewer, cook, herbalist, engraver. Let me guess, you can't draft the mayor. Oh, yes, you can. Boom, there we go. Kim, you're in the military now. In the military. In the military. Uh, let's go to the. Oh, I've left you on the therapist, haven't I? Let's go back to the fortress. There we go. Now to the military screen, where we look at the Night Rippers and look at their schedule. Yeah, Night Rippers. One minimum. Let's keep the barracks at will. Edit. Uh, train. Defend burrows. Patrol boot. Station. Train. There we go. And uh, minimum soldiers, two, because they're going to be stuck in the room together. And then we copy and paste, 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 paste. 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 Uh, his thoughts are like seeing a bed, seeing somebody sleeping, witnesses a death. That's true, Fuzzy. That is quite a good, strong line of evidence to convict the mayor. That's actually quite a good point. Yeah. Uh, Clay Creek can put them in a squad of their own and keep sending them on suicide raids until they don't come back. Well, that's not the maddest idea that anyone's ever had, but I like the idea of leaving them just locked up and training for a while. It makes sense. Uh, to me, at least. To me, it makes sense. Okay, so we're on here now. Let's take a looky peeky at. Ah, 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 ah. There we go. There's the thing. There's a barracks, and we assign it to the Night Rippers. Train. Sleep. Excellent. Finally, we'll get the training after all this time. Uh, right, let's go down to the bottom floor and which of the gates is open? Gates! Needs furniture hauling. Oh, I see. He's not able to haul it, so it's not going to happen. Fuck it. Okay, add a new task, pull the lever, do it now, and then. Also pull that one, although I hope it doesn't free the vampire. That would be annoying. Pull the lever now. There we go. And that should open that one and close that one. That's the theory. That's the theory. Yeah, that's true. Vampires don't sleep. Again, lending weight to your theory of them seeing beds and having bad thoughts. Intriguing. Intriguing, I say. Uh, let's go down and look at our workshops. We've not been watching those very carefully, have we? Again, nobody here. Because it's absolutely stuffed with spiked copper balls. Okay, what about this one? Spiked copper balls and aluminium bars. This one's full of zinc and nickel bars. This one's got nothing in it. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, sorry, you've got to click on it. No, you don't. Just hover. Huh. Okay. There's not a lot of activity going on down here, is there? In fact, barely any. Part of me wants to move on to a new a new area for our magma uh, magma industries, but this is conveniently constructed, you know, it is actually extant and ready to go. <clears throat> it might make more sense to wall this tunnel off and then dig round and connect to the new area. Doran Labour Straw. Labour store wants to come to entertain citizens and visitors. Well, once again, I have to say we have a no bards policy now. The bards we have are enough. We had too many turn up at one time, and it's just been a bloody nightmare since. An absolute bloody nightmare. If the night rippers are set to train for the whole year, then they might not have time to do furniture hauling. That's a good point, Clay Cree. Let's go and change the night rippers so they only have uh, most of the year for training. So, uh, schedule training. Uh, that's the current one. So next month, 
we'll give them a cancel order. Boom, no scheduled order. Good. There we go. And it probably not enough. I need nine more nest boxes. Holy shit. Um, do I have them in storage? Build nest box. I have some. So let's put one there. I've got three. It's nowhere near enough, but it will have to do. There, there we go. Sure, that's the last one. Needs nest box. Okay, that's cool. Um, back out again. Uh, what was I doing? I've set this as a dining room meeting hall again. That's nice. Uh, for the purpose of study, law waning glazes. You can stay. I like the idea of people coming here to study. It's good. It's fantastic. It's nice. Okay, so these barracks are good. They're training. I mean, maybe I need to actually take more non-skilled dwarves and whack them in this barracks because we're never going to get that one up to full strength if we don't just take some randos in. P pardon me, rando. You know what I mean. Not you. Although you can go into them if you want, there's nothing stopping you. Oh, hang on a minute, we didn't we, uh... Ah, ah, and look at this. Very nice. Not a petition. Study. Oh, hang on a minute. Endoc flesh hide. He, oh, fle flesh, fleshy die. Endoc fleshy die. Ooh. He's heard the news that we're accepting trade, uh, accepting a, um, what they call students, and he's right on it. He's all about it. Uh, I need to change the order of this dig, don't I, the uh, priority. If we change this room to priority one. There we go. That makes sense. And then this room to priority two. Okay. There we go. And then we change this to priority three over here. go and then we'll change the corridor to priority one as well otherwise it won't get dug there we go just here and across here there we go and of course the entry points otherwise they won't get dug lovely and then of course we can go to priority four or bog standard priority as i'm sure some people call it we just go across to there and to there Nice. Ah, also, probably makes sense to check and see if they finished all the digging. There, yeah, they have. <laughs> okay, that means we can now, starting from the surface, just start channeling down. So, D, H, priority, oh, pants, got conflicting priorities now, just have to do it five. There we go. Priority five. And then priority six on the next row. In fact, oh, what am I doing? That's madness. Just do that one, priority six. And then the next one is priority seven. Yeah, there we go, priority seven. Down one, priority. That's it, can't go any lower priority. How's that ended up there? What the? F Funky Dickens of people doing channeling around there. Madness. <sighs> uh, I got accepted at Steel Fortress University. I'm going to eat Etin stew every night. Well, that sounds good. If they've collected the Etin, they have. That's good. Got some clothing lying around here. What's all this about? Let's have a little peeky poo at what we've found on the floor. Come on. Show me. Alpaca wool clothes. Clothes. What the fuck? A steel warhammer? Find it again? Where the hell? It's in this square. Steel warhammer, bronze battle axe. Wait, are they, are they named weapons? Oh my god, there's a 58 grand battle hammer. What's, why is it so expensive and how have I not seen it? This is a steel warhammer. All craft's dwarfship or craft's manship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with tapered baguette-cut red spinels and decorated with elk bone. 
the beloved desert. Well, uh, oh, hang on. If I press enter, we can say claim. F. Hey, we got another axe. Okay, what's this one? Show slow cast neck tathat. Okay, also worth 42 grand. Fergurant butchers the burstals of plungum. Okay, well, let's try seeing what that's all about. This is a bronze battle axe. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with pig bone. This object menaces with spikes of goose bone and pink tourmaline. On the item is an image of rectangular cabochons in water buffalo hoof. Lovely. In that case, we'll claim it. What's next? Oh, Sober Sletsmug Ngonu Strunsu. Isn't this the etin? Value zero. Oh, it's just a spatter of its blood. Intriguing. This is a Sober Sletsmug Ngo Strunsu's lower back, left back tooth, right head. Oh, one of his teeth is lying on the floor. Valueless, though, so let's ignore it. What else have we got going on here? Dead chicory, pile of vomit. Uh, let's unfor... Oh, no, we they're already unforbidden. Sorry, I thought that was all forbidden stuff, but apparently not. What's going on here? Stray yak cow mangled skeleton. Well, that's not much use to us. We'll leave it where it is. They appear to have taken the etin and butchered it, so they will be eating it. Wow, did you collude with the etin to have them maim the human visitors so you can get their artifacts? No. That just was a happy little accident. So let's thank Bob Ross, rather than any kind of uh, conspiracy. The spy sprays. No, you are not coming here to entertain people. But look at this fucking tavern stuffed full of entertainers. We've got goblin poets, we've got dancers, we've got, we've got just tons of stuff going on. So everybody calm down, okay? Let's go back over here and check to see if our mayor is trying to get into his barracks. He isn't. Although, he's not currently required to be in his barracks. Oh, they're working. Look. Someone's making spike glass balls. Lovely. Anyway, uh, where were we? Um, okay. It's all going fine here, just the mayor's not there. So what I'm going to do is... Look at the burrow. V burrow. That's the one we want. Uh, add citizens to burrow. There we go. Let me find the mayor. What's his name? Rith, wasn't it? Not Ast. No. Rith, 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 Rith. Where are you, Rith? Come on, Rith. Or does he even does he even count as a civilian anymore? Because he is in the military. Oh, you're right. No, I didn't just go past him. Who did? Mesbeth, Nil, Thob, Hasmel, Ral? No, it's Rith. I'm pretty sure it's Rith. Hmm. Rith, 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 Rith. Rith, 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 Rith. Rith, Rith. I'm not seeing Rith anywhere. Where's your captain? S. I've just searched. R. I. T. H. No, it's not there. No, maybe if I type S and then we have M A Y. Hey, there it's Kib. No wonder I couldn't find him. Uh, enter add to burrow. Good. Okay, presumably now, presumably he'll come rushing over here and try to get to his burrow, at which point we can flip some switches. Flip the motherfucking switches. You can't see, but I was I was doing that thing where you raise your hand up and down, roughly level with your head with your elbow out, in to indicate like you're doing some kind of hippity hop rhythms. But uh it was a big waste of time. Because the camera's not on. Tragic, hey. Tragic. Not half as tragic as explaining it. That's even more tragic. Kivish the tanner cancels eat item. Eat sorry, cancels eat item inaccessible. I am worried that I've assigned more than just that lad to the burrow, but we'll see. 
so much vomit lining the halls, it's unbelievable. Look at these little green squares. Each of those is a chunder pile. Ew. Okay. Have they picked up the axes yet? Oh, there's another pile of stuff here. Bronze amulet. Large cat bone leggings? What? What the fuck are cat bone leggings? Okay, so this is Amogtaran. Fog body. A bronze amulet. This is a bronze amulet. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of Endok touch vessels. The dwarf in Kugabo. Very nice. Uh, what's this? Sakutudil Thasdothuk Gang. Is this not the item? Is that not the weapon used by the enemy? Dot Lanterns, the Exalted Yaw. A schist toy boat. Okay, it's not the thing that the Etin was using. This is a schist toy boat. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. This object menaces with spikes of Drowther bone, Sagaro ribwood, bronze, and clear glass. Cool. Let's claim it then. Oh, I didn't claim that last one, did I? F, there we go. Uh, what else is on the list? Lumnumilush. Lumnumilush. What is Lumnumilush? The Labyrinth of Carnage. A large cat bone leggings. Worth 63 grand. Cool. This is a large cat bone leggings. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion black pyro cabochons and cushion cut praise opals. This object menaces with spikes of reindeer antler. On the item is an image of a rambutan tree in Alexandrite. Very nice. We'll keep it. Thank you. Vit chest. This was something that the uh, the thing was carrying, wasn't it? The Etienne was carrying this, and it's worth ninety eight grand. The worry of obeying. We'll claim it first, then read the description. This is a microcline amulet. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. This object menaces with spikes of eagle bone, aquamarine, and native platinum. On the item is an image of emerald cut gems in red flash opal. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, I, hang on. Oh, I've already claimed it. It's all right. Keboshming kill. Let's have a look at Keboshming kill. It's worth 86 grand. Zealot leopards, a large steel helm. This is a large steel helm. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with large rat bone. This object menaces with spikes of indigo tourmaline. On the item is an image of a cashew tree in native silver. Very nice. Cashew, one of my favourite nuts. Right up there with the pistachio and the macadamia. Good nuts. Best nuts. Let's claim this. Uh, now, we don't want to reclaim the hair grass or the vomit, so we'll leave that be. Uh, can we see any more piles of equipment? There's a sock and a shoe there on top of a pile of vomit. Normally, when I encounter clothing on vomit in the street, I leave it be. I don't touch it. Uh, not to say it happens often, but it has definitely happened before. I've seen vomity jackets, vomity socks, and I've even seen vomity underwear. In fact, there's a tree near where I lived, which I was... Uh, uh, I was, I was with my kids and we were like climbing up the tree and we got about halfway up and I looked down and at the base of the tree there was a pair of uh, ladies knickers full of shit and uh, a scrumpled up used condom in the middle of it which uh, you know changed the atmosphere in the tree at first it was all uh, fun and games hundred acre wood family stuff and then you look down and go oh I see <laughs> maybe I need to be doing some explaining in a minute Let's get the kids off of the tree and hope they don't ask what that balloon's for. It was all good. Apart from the fact that it was bad. Anyway, where were we? Uh, yes, we were trying to get this fortress running, weren't we? Uh, the military's going fine. They're collecting all the gear off the floor. That's good. Uh, our orders are slowly but surely getting made down here. We've actually got somebody working. What are you doing? Probably melting things down to make bolts and bars. I'm worried about steel bolts, actually. Why are they in there? Excuse me, unless I put in orders to melt them down. Episode? It double episode, maybe, says Fuzzy Logic. And looking at the uh, looking at the time, I can see that for the YouTubers, yes, this is going to be a substantially longer than it should be episode, because we've been recording for an hour and nine minutes. Ah, <sighs> well done, me. Also, things like blood and vomit can stick to feet or shoes and be trampled through the fort. Mmm, mmm. The smell of vomity shoes. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay, well, in that case, those of you watching on YouTube, thank you very much for doing so. It's been a genuine pleasure recording for you, but I have to go now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, mouse, mouse was actually on another monitor and I got confused. Let's try that again. Bye.